So another important part of English fluency, of course, is pronunciation, right? Speaking clearly, clear pronunciation so we can understand you and what you're saying. So there are some ways to improve this. There are some great ways to improve this. But you don't have to lose your accent. Many students ask me, how can I lose my accent? I don't want to speak with a, you know, Spanish accent or a German, you know, but you don't have to lose your accent. That is quite difficult and it's not important. It's part of who you are, your culture, your background. You just have to find how to speak clearly so we can understand you. So native speakers can understand you. I have three fun ways to do this. Let's talk about them. Number one, reading aloud, reading aloud. What is this reading aloud? So this is something that I always teach my students to do and it works really well. It's simple, but it really can help. Reading aloud is when you speak out the words as you read. So you don't just read silent. You read and speak out. Many of my students do this, <laughs> so they have had good results. Um, let me give you an example. I'm going to read a part from my story, Darren's Passion, my little mini story about travel, which you can find in the free audio book, talking about travel if you don't have it yet. This is on page eight and nine of the travel book, talking about travel. Darren loves to travel. It's his passion. He doesn't like his job at all. So he finds fulfillment in traveling around the world whenever he can. So that's just an example of me reading aloud, right? Reading a story. So you can find a short story and I give you some in this course, a short little story, not too long, or even just one page from a book you have and read it out aloud. But you must follow this system. First, start slowly, start really slow, because this helps you to think carefully about what you are reading and think about the words and how to say them. Number two, try it with the big mouth technique. What's this? Well, as you might know, I'm also an actor. I have a lot of experience working as an actor in theater and TV and films. And actors, of course, have to read aloud. They read the script out and they, they need to practice the voice and the speech. So I know a lot about this and how it can help you. So we use a big mouth technique. This really helps. This is when you open your mouth <laughs> really wide and you exaggerate the sounds. That means you make it bigger first in the beginning. Let me give you an example. Darren loves to travel. This is not a normal way to speak, but it helps you relax and exercise your mouth and jaw muscles. So you can start to make the English sounds easier and better because we have many sounds that are not in your language that are not native for you. So you have to train your mouth to become more relaxed and fluid. So, Darren loves to travel. It's his passion. He doesn't like his job at all. So you make it really strong like that. Also, to help you with this, use your imagination and imagine a small ball, you know, a round ball inside your mouth. Place it on the middle of your tongue. So, Imagine this ball is sitting in the middle of your mouth on the tongue. Your job is to talk around this ball. So that makes you, it forces you to speak with a much more open mouth. He works very hard in his office for a big software company. So even if you don't know the sounds, if you don't know if you are making correct sounds. This will still help. You'll be surprised. Also, you can listen to the audios here. You can listen first. You can listen to me. I will talk about that more, but speak with a big open mouth. And then after 
you can relax. Do this a few times and then start to just relax your mouth and do it normally. Darren loves to travel and your mouth will be more relaxed. So this is a great one. Try this. Next one. Number two is another practical exercise. I'm sure you have heard of tongue twisters, right? What's a tongue twister? So this is your, this is your tongue. Okay. But you use to eat and drink and talk, make sounds. And twist to twist means to move it like that. So it, you can exercise your tongue and make sounds. This is a fun way to practice certain sounds that you have a problem with. I'll give you a few to practice during this mini challenge. A common sound that is a problem for many English learners from many countries is the TH sound, the soft TH. How do we make this? We stick our tongue between the teeth, just softly like this. And we blow some air. Just try it now with me. Stick your tongue here and blow some air through the teeth. You can do this in front of a mirror to check the tongue. This is not natural for many languages. So you have to train your tongue and your mouth. So I'm going to give you some tongue twisters to practice this. Let's start slowly and then you can get faster. Let's try a tongue twister. Three thirsty things on Thursday. Three thirsty things on Thursday. And you can get faster. Three thirsty things on Thursday. Three thirsty things on Thursday. Do it together with me. Three thirsty things on Thursday. Three thirsty things on Thursday. Three thirsty things on Thursday. Faster. <laughs> so maybe some spit will come out your mouth. That's good. You're using the tongue. You can exaggerate, make it more in the beginning. And later you can just relax your mouth and do it normally. Next one. Youthful youths through that tooth in the booth. Youthful youths through that tooth in the booth. So this one is a little more difficult because often when the TH is at the end of the word or in the middle, it's more difficult than the beginning, if you know what I mean. So three, maybe it's more, it's easier than youthful or youths. That's difficult with THS, youths. This means young people, youth. A youth is a young person. Youths, youths. THS is quite difficult. You have to pull it back like a snake. Youths. Let's get faster. Youthful youths through that tooth in the booth. Youthful youths through that tooth in the booth. Great. So the sentence doesn't make sense. That's not the idea. It's not important. It's just for the sounds practice. And one more. Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. That's a difficult one. Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. 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 Th thumb <laughs> so even for me, it's difficult to do fast, but try slowly and then get a little bit faster. And this will teach your mouth how to use the TH sound. One more sound that is often very difficult for many students is V, V, V sound, V. With this one, we bite our bottom lip just a little, V. See, I put my bottom lip here, V, V. Now we don't usually bite it hard, but to practice in the beginning, really make it strong. Try to bite your bottom lip so you can feel it. V. 
va. And do this. Va 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 boom. Va 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 boom. Do this a few times every day in the morning. Today you need to do this and keep going. Here are some tongue twisters for this one. He's a very vicious vampire. 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 Great. This one is a long one and more difficult, so let's go slowly. Vivacious vowel vacuumed Violet's very vivid vehicle. Vivacious vowel vacuumed Violet's very vivid vehicle. Vivacious vowel vacuumed Violet's very vivid vehicle. And one more with a B sound. B and V can be confusing. Betty loves the velvet vest best. 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 Great. <laughs> so, you can read the PDF transcript and practice these. Also, I recommend, I recommend a children's book to help with this. It's called Dr. Seuss, S-U-E-S-S, -S -S, Dr. Seuss. He has a book called, Oh, You Can Say. This is a children's book in English, but it is great for simple reading practice. And also you can say the sounds. There are tongue twisters in there. So try this one. Number three, shadowing, the shadowing technique, or we also call it imitation. So this is when you listen and you copy what you hear. It's very common. It's very simple and many teachers use it, but it's very useful and effective. You can do this with movies or TV shows if you're a higher level. So you can listen and pause and copy. But if you're still new to this, you should try it with the audio books, with my mini stories that I give you here. Keep it simple. So there are a few ways to do this correctly. You need to really copy exactly what you hear. Okay. So you need to copy some important points. First, the sentence stress. What are the strong words in the sentence? And the weak sounds. What are the weak sounds? And also the intonation. So this is where it goes up or down, up or down in the sentence. I'll give you some examples and you can copy from me. Darren doesn't have a problem with flying. Darren doesn't have a problem with flying. So what is the strong word in this sentence? Darren doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't in this case is quite strong. Often it's not, but here I want to emphasize that he doesn't. Darren doesn't have a problem with flying. Also flying is quite strong. The weak sounds are have a, have a, have a problem, have a problem with. So it's joining together. We call this connected speech, have a problem with. Darren doesn't have a problem with flying. You can also try to use the emotion as well. Try to even use your body to really make it stronger. Let me give you another sentence to shadow and copy. I get excited when the flight gets all bumpy. I get excited when the flight gets all bumpy. What are the strong words here? Excited, bumpy. The other ones are, are softer, aren't they? So I get, I get, I get excited when the, when the flight, when the flight. 
So a lot of it is, is joining, it's connected. When the flight gets all, gets all. When the flight gets all bumpy. I get excited when the flight gets all bumpy. So this is from my story, from the travel story, the free audio book talking about travel. You can find this, um, I can give this to you. You can see this in the mini challenge. Use this story to help you. Now I'm going to give you a little exercise practice. I'm going to talk about my day. So the first time, just listen. And then after, you can practice shadowing. Here we go. So this morning, I woke up about 7, 7 o'clock. And I got up about 7.30. Then I cleaned my room and I had a shower. After that, I got ready for a student. I had a Skype lesson at 8.30. So I got a drink of water and I sat down to teach my student at 8.30. She's from China and she lives in Melbourne. So we chatted and practiced English for one hour. It was great. After that, I had a short break and I had some breakfast. I had some fried eggs. It was really nice. I had some fried eggs. Then I had something to drink. I did a bit of cleaning. Then I had to have a consultation with another student at 11 o'clock on Skype. I met with her. She's from Brazil. She wanted to talk to me about my English classes. So it was really nice to meet. Okay, so it's just a simple short one to start with. And in that one, I talked about my morning routine, my morning today. So we will go back and listen to this one and pay attention to the sentence stress and the connected speech. You can copy it and practice. Okay, great. So for today's challenge, you need to do this exercise to practice shadowing. Copy me in this exercise. Good luck.